What's up, everybody? It's your boy True Element Seventy Eight in the building with your one and only reigning, defending Mondo Lucha Hall of Famer, the X Man Xavier Mustafa, and everybody's favorite narcissist, the natural Chris Black. And today, Mustafa, you you, you all right? You sound like not enthusi enthused right now. I'm I'm a little ill, but you know I'm excited because we're here to talk about NXT Takeover Thirty One live from Full Sail University in Winter Park, Florida, this Sunday. Aren't you guys excited? Hold up, hold up, hold up, Xavier Mustafa. I'm going to need you to stand down and stand by because you're just taking my introduction right here and turning it into crap. That's because this is NXT. This is my home. This is my... We were talking about AEW. I'll go ahead and gladly let you take the reins. But we're talking about <laughs> NXT, the best wrestling product on TV right now, especially on Wednesdays. You're such At a least clown. in America. This, this this clown. It's the worst show on television. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Go All ahead. Right, lead so the way, oh, great what, leader. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you got? No, I was saying go ahead, great leader. This is your show tonight. One night only. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's talk about how we got here at the last takeover. We saw, uh, what's his name? Bob, uh, can't think of his name. Keith Lee lose the NXT championship to Kyrian Cross. And then Kyrian Cross got injured in that match. So then his title went up for grabs. We also saw a crowning of a new NXT North American champion in Damian Priest. And then we also had a COVID situation where a trainer was infected. And they changed a whole bunch of stuff in NXT. And that's how we're getting here tonight. So let's start off with. A singles match. We got the returning Kushida versus the Velveteen Dream. Um, I'm going to pick that Kushida is going to go over in this one since, you know, Velveteen Dream is kind of on the wrong end of the, the stick here, you know, due to his uh, extracurricular activities alleged. <laughs> I'm actually thinking that the WWE or NXT universe, I should say, I, I'm going to think if there's the main roster, I'll probably go with Kushida. But I think I think we're gonna go with the Velveteen Dream because he needs to start racking up some wins. So I'm gonna go with the Velveteen Dream, and I did want to just throw something out there. Have you guys noticed? It seems like whenever WWE hot shots a title onto an incoming person, like that they they immediately go to the top of the roster and they win the main title on whatever show it is that they're on. They always get injured in that match. Like Finn Balor got injured. Um. Mustafa Ali was probably going to be hot shot into winning the WWE title or being in contention for it. He got injured and then carrying cross. It just seems like if you come into that company and the first thing they want to do is put a title on you, it's like you're cursed. Yeah, I agree. That has been the, uh, the, uh, the situation as of late. Right. So go ahead, Chris Black. What's your pick? Believe it or not, I want to go with the Velveteen dream. Um, if they're going to do anything with Kushida, I guess he got his 15 minutes of fame tonight because they did a little bit of a segment on him. I don't know. I I just, I don't think WWE takes him 100% serious. I mean, is he a talent? Sure. But I think they're, I think they're still going to go forward with Velveteen Dream. The only quote-unquote punishment he got was not winning the NXT title. See, the reason why I think they will go with Kushida is just because of the way they brought him back in. I don't think you bring anybody back in that way and have them do what he's done the past couple of weeks to have him lose at the first big event. So, that's what I'm deciding to go with him. On uh, tonight's episode of NXT, uh, we saw the return of Dexter Loomis. Do you guys think he's going to have anything to do with this uh, pay-per-view? I just don't want him on my screen. Not interested in him. As a person who does not watch NXT, not too familiar with Dexter Loomis, I'm more intrigued with who the person is that's returning that was riding the motorcycle in the vignettes. Maybe it's Dexter. No, it's not Dexter Loomis. <laughs> but they did have a stare off between Dexter Loomis and Camion, Camion, uh, Cameron Grimes after Cameron Grimes got the crap beat out of him. Uh, so we may see an impromptu match with those guys. But we also have the NXT 
Cruiserweight Championship. Santos Escobar will be defending against Isaiah Swerve Scott. Let's start with you, True Element. Who do you think is going to go over in this one? I'm going to go with Escobar. I like, I, I think it's too soon to take the title off of him. And I like, I, I just love that character. Like, when I do watch NXT, that's one of the characters I think really stands out to me. I still don't think that Isaiah Swerve Scott, I think he's good, but I still think he's pretty green. And I don't think this is where you put the title on him. I think you put the title on him, whatever NXT does around Royal Rumble, but I don't think now is the time. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's too early. They're still kind of establishing who Santos Escobar is. Um, besides that, I kind of feel like they gave away the ending because Isaiah was saying, I'm the only guy you know, in NXT, no, and in all of WWE that's ever pinned you. I'm like, okay, so that lets people know that you're able to beat them, so you're not going to beat them this Sunday. I would agree with both of you guys. I think that they will keep the belt on Santos Escobar, but I'm interested in what they're going to do with Mr. Swerve Scott. I mean, was today the first promo we've ever seen this dude cut? Because I heard his voice. I was like, oh, man, this is the first time I've heard this dude's voice, and you know, looking kind of sharp with the blazer on and everything like that, but we'll see what happens. Uh, then I'm going to kind of do this as a package deal. We got the power couple of NXT. Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano will both be in action in singles matches. We got the NXT Women's Championship match. Iro Shirai defending against Candice LeRae. Who do you guys got for this one? Io Shirai easily. Oh, I'm going with Candice, Candice LeRae just because I think I think they want to move EO up. This is just my thoughts. I don't know. I haven't heard any rumors or anything, but I kind of feel like they want to bring her up there because I don't want to say there's nothing for her in NXT, but there kind of isn't. It seems like she's above that, so to speak. I think she has no competition. There you go. She has no competition in NXT. They need to move her up. Well, you still got Rhea yeah, Ripley. Do you still got Rhea Ripley down there, and it gives somebody mm. Rhea Ripley somebody. Competent. They buried her with Charlotte. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's still been kicking ass though. She's lost a hell of a lot of steam though. And she got a new hairdo. You know, you ought to make me get a push when you change your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Especially blonde. Unless your name is Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the other half, Johnny Gargano. Going up against the NXT North American champion, Damian Priest. This was hard. But I'm going to go with Damian Priest because he just won it. And plus, Johnny Gargano's held that title before. I think this is kind of a placeholder. Um, as soon as Gargano gets a chance, I think he's going for the title, the main title. Yeah, I think that. Damian Priest is going to take this because it's too soon. I think this is this match is really here to establish his character that he's somebody that can actually go in there and put in the work and actually wrestle. So I think this is going to be that showcase for Damian Priest. Not to say he ha hasn't already had showcases and spe spectacular matches in NXT, but when you're in there with Johnny Gargano, it's a whole different ball game. So I think this is to basically That's showcase about, Damian Priest. Oh, Oh, I was just saying, I just think this is something to showcase Damian Priest that he can turn it up. All right. Well, I want to wait till both of these matches were announced before I get my prediction. I think Candice LeRae is definitely going to go over against Io Shirai. I don't think Johnny Gargano is going to go over Damian Priest because just like one of you guys said, I think he should be going after the NXT title again. And since they're kind of pushing them as the power couple of NXT, they can't have them keep losing. So they got to get some belts. So that's my opinion on that one. Uh, so like I was saying earlier, there was a trainer that was affected uh, with uh, COVID. NXT had to switch up a lot of their bookings after that. Um, so that kind of, even though Triple H has been on record to say that a Kyle O'Reilly push was imminent, they really had to push it up because of what happened with the whole COVID situation. So we got the NXT championship on the match. Finn Balor versus Kyle O'Reilly. I really like the video package they did tonight on NXT. 
I also like the 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 fact that Kyle O'Reilly said he's always wanted to be in the ring with Johnny or Johnny with Finn Balor, and that when he was in the states wrestling, Finn Balor was over in Japan. When he got to Japan, he was in Finn Balor was in NXT. When Kyle O'Reilly got to NXT, Finn Balor was on Raw. So now they finally get to mix it up in the ring. What do you guys think? Okay. So this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, not because I don't like Kyle O'Reilly, because I do think he's a talent. Um, This spot shouldn't go to Roderick Strong. If they wanted to do something with the undisputed error, this should be Roderick Strong's spot. Because I think Finn Balor's not going to lose. And... If Rod, if it was Roddy going against Finn Balor, maybe not now, but some months down the road, I could see him taking it from Finn and him and Gargano having an excellent program. But, yeah, the, the short answer is Finn Balor is going to beat Kyle O'Reilly. It's going to be a hell of a match, but he's not going to beat him. I would have to say I think that Kyle O'Reilly is going to take it. I don't think Finn Balor, like, I think NXT wants a heel at the top of the card, but I think that what you can get out of this is basically the evolution story angle because they did have um, Adam Cole come out there and cut the promo about the prophecy being fulfilled and all of that. I think that Kyle O'Reilly wins the title here, and this is how you're going to have the dissension and the breakup of the Undisputed Era. To start moving people up to the main roster because I don't think they come up to the main roster together. So, I'm gonna say Kyle O'Reilly wins it here, and we get the storyline of the of the breakup of Undisputed Era. I don't see Kyle O'Reilly going over in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, just Finn Balor just recently got the championship himself. I see Finn Balor holding it for a little bit. I see them maybe doing a program. Maybe eventually he gets it. But I think Kyle O'Reilly is the right person to go with over Roderick Strong just because I feel like Roderick Strong has had his singles uh, hurrah, if you will, where Kyle O'Reilly has not. So that's the only thing why I would say I don't agree with your opinion, Chris Black, but, I mean, it's a valid opinion nonetheless. But I think, I think, yeah, I think Finn Balor wins this one. Hold on a second. Um, did you catch the shade that Kylo Roddy th- uh, threw when um, he was talking about Finn Balor? He was like, you know, this is your first title offense. He was like, nobody loses their first title offense. And you know who <laughs> I was thinking of, right? Wait, who lost the first? Oh, Sasha Van? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> she loses every title defense. She's indefensible. shit all over Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks gonna have a Goldberg streak when it comes to defending titles. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna be a really, really short pay-per-view. I don't really see a ton of these matches going long, but do you think there'll be any other surprises at NXT TakeOver 31? I had thought of a surprise, possibly, because um, I've heard rumors that they kind of want to start up a Bullet Club-type faction with Finn Balor and um, Adam Cole. So Adam Cole putting over Kyle O'Reilly so hard could could spell a potential turn in him helping Finn Balor retain that title. That was also where I got the idea that Kyle O'Reilly actually takes it. And then the Adam Cole and him, you know, they go out there to try to have like a friendly match for the title or something like that. And Adam Cole just can't beat Kyle O'Reilly. So, I don't know. Uh, some type of roundabout way you get there. Who do you guys think it is that's returning? The former champion that's returning that they've ha- been having all these previews for on the motorcycle. Who, who would be your guess? See, when they say former champion, what do they mean? Former NXT champion? Former NWA champion? You know, like, it's so general. Because the first thing you'll start speculating is about NXT champions, and then you find out it was a former Universal champion or something. Who knows? Maybe it's Brock Lesnar. Who knows? 
<laughs> um, what's the dude's name? The Fiend's brother. Oh, Bo Dallas. Dallas. Yes. Oh, he's a, he's a former champ. He's not doing anything. That is actually probably a prediction that's on the money because I did read that they were doing something with Bo Dallas and that he was returning in NXT. All you have to do is a gimmick overhaul. All you have to do is believe. <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know, Bo Dallas used to be Mustafa's guy. I love that gimmick. I'm not even gonna lie. If we can't make the same gimmick, I'll still be happy. <laughs> I just remember him just getting destroyed every time he come out there with that sign. Believe in his tighty whities All you got to do is believe. I was a believer. <laughs> All right, before we wrap this up, is there anything anybody else wants to add about NXT TakeOver 31? Anything on my TV has got to be better than the debates that happened on Tuesday. So, so <laughs> Mine's not so harsh, but Mustafa. Since you are the NXT connoisseur. So me and True, we kind of think that NXT is kind of falling off a bit. B-O-R-I-N-G. <laughs> so NXT is definitely going through some growing pains right now because their roster has been raped and pillaged. Hold up. Nobody, nobody's <laughs> left, NXT, nobody's yeah, left but... NXT besides Keith Lee. So you're saying Keith Lee was the heart and soul of NXT? Is that what you're admitting right now? Well, no, they took a bunch of people before Keith Lee, and then Keith Lee was the only person holding it down. Because <laughs> Mercedes Martinez wasn't doing much. Um, um, wh- wh- what's the other? Mia Yim w- was down there, I guess, doing something. Dio Madden wasn't doing much. Yeah, you got Donovan, Di- Donovan Dijakovic. I was actually getting tired of him. Sonship. He's up there. Like, everybody's at the main roster now. You, you, you're you, picking the bones now. But luckily, NXT, since it has so many extra people down there training, at least we get to finally see some new faces, which I think we're starting to see in the women uh, more so than the men. But, you know, you still got your Johnny Garganos. You still got your Tommaso Ciampas. So you still got a couple of people. But, I mean, they can't be on top all the time. I really think. NXT is kind of getting long in the teeth now. I think that they need to trim some of the fat that's down there because a lot of people that are, are in NXT now, they've done everything that they can do in NXT, and I think that's what makes it kind of boring because you've had Johnny Gargano fight every time Dick and Harry down there. You've pretty much seen everything that he can do. You've seen everything that Tommaso Ciampa can do. The roster, The roster isn't getting mixed up enough, for me at least, at least how I feel watching it, as so much. Also, keep in mind if you get a Bo Dallas down there, um, rumor has it that the next shakeup is supposed to be coming up. October fourteenth, baby. Draft. October fourteenth. October fourteenth. No, October 9th, I think, because October fourteenth is a Wednesday. Because that's the. Oh, that's October the, 9th. There let, you let, go. Let me throw my plug out there. That's the AEW two year anniversary or one year anniversary. Damn, they only been kicking. They only been kicking <laughs> NXT's. Uh, excuse me, NXT's ass for a year. Wow. <laughs> it feels like they've been kicking their ass for a very long longer than that. I, I do want to express that you're talking about AEW's only show against WWE's C show. Who? Okay. Oh, right. oh, so so it's the C show. <laughs> you not you disrespect this T. I'm just saying it's the C show see, that's, see, in the see, eyes of Vince McMahon. See the see the A show. A lot see, of fans, it's the A show. See the A the show is AEW Dynamite. Honestly, Honestly, if they put AEW on Monday nights, they'd kill Monday Night Raw. Oh, you smoking that good stuff over there. No, because Raw is shitty, dude. <laughs> but this ain't about Raw. Don't, don't it let me is, start. but Raw is like... Raw is like that old matriarch, you know, of the family. You know, everybody still love it, but, you know, it, it may not be the best thing in the world, but it's the oldest. It gets the most respect. The young kids will never get that, that respect as the matriarch. Yeah, it's, cla- it's classic sense. Mountain Dew. NXT is Diet Mountain Dew, but AEW is Mountain Dew Cold Red, baby. <laughs> no, more like the Baja Blast. Hey. hey. What's wrong with us? Yeah, what's wrong with Baja Blast? What's the one you want to get from Taco Bell? That's Baja Blast. Yeah, see. They got that new one called Voodoo, though. Y'all got to try that. It just tastes like somebody melted a whole box of Mike and Ike's 
and turned into the Nobody liquid. wants to know what nobody knows what that tastes like unless they go to Taco Bell. That's what AEW is. <laughs> Taco Bell used to be good, but anyways, Those just like just marks. like just like NXT. I think NXT is Taco Bell. It used to be good. Then they got rid of all the flavor. <laughs> Oh, we gonna talk about what restaurant they are. They're definitely Chick Fil A. Oh, A W <laughs> hell yeah. A W is more so Popeyes. God damn. They gonna jack up your order when you get there. <laughs> they ain't gonna have no honey for your biscuits, and they ain't gonna have no hot oh, sauce. Not, not not talk, if A W if A W is Popeyes, then N X T is churches. <laughs> But now, oh now, now we got a black podcast, and all we doing is talking about chicken. So let's just get up out of here. Um, go ahead and give out your social medias, your credentials, all of that good stuff. You can catch me at <laughs> I was going to say XM Cinema. <laughs> well, you can catch me there at XM Cinema on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Uh, you can also catch me at Xavier Mustafa on Facebook and on the Twitter. You can catch me at the Natural Chris Black on Facebook and on Instagram and at the underscore natural underscore CB on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, The Natural Chris Black. Right now, I am reviewing every single night of the G1 Climax Tournament. Uh, if you have been watching that, you know how hot the action's been and my reviews have been just as hot. So, be sure to give me a subscribe, like, a share. All that good shit. <laughs> and before before you get your yours in trailer, I just want to tell the people out there make love to that thumbs up button and that subscribe button for us. Okay, leave a comment in the comment sections. Let them know that Xavier Mustafa is your favorite host. <laughs> you gotta say it. <laughs> just do me that. See, see if you can do it. If you can do it like Chef did on South Park, make sweet love to that like button, baby. <laughs> get your Isaac Hayes on or something, then maybe they'll do that. But yeah, definitely hit that like button. Definitely hit that subscribe button and definitely hit that ring that bell so you're notified whenever new episodes go up on the YouTube. Currently, we have the Undertaker um, Last Ride doc documentary. Our reviews of that up on the page, so make sure you're checking that out. Down the road, we're going to be reviewing some WWE films for you guys, so it's going to be a little bit of a crossover between XM Cinema and Saturday Night Slamcasters, so you'll get our thoughts on some of the WWE Films collection. You're going to find some films you never even knew that WWE produced. So that's going to be really interesting. And then we're also going to be reviewing crappy wrestling pay-per-views or shows. The ones that are available for us to find. So like I said, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube page. Um, I'll let Xavier Mustafa do a quick church announcement because they do have a show coming up. And yes. Yes, we do. It's LPW503 coming to you live from the Root River Center located at 7220 West Rawson Avenue in Franklin, Wisconsin. Tickets are available right now at LegacyProWI.com or Facebook.com forward slash LegacyProWI. Chris Black will be there. Even though he got them hands or them, or them, <laughs> them, them poles or whatever they beat him down with the last show, but he missed it. <laughs> Uh, but he will be on the card. We got the heavyweight champion, Brown Sugar, defending against this function. And uh, what else we got going on? We got the dark man. Yep. And we got the dark match mafia. They're going to be in the ring with Devin August, somebody who, you know, I know you're not a fan of right now. Uh, Devin August and <laughs> Jordan Harrison. So it's going to be a good night. Tickets are 20 bucks. Yep. And like we said, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. You can also follow us over on Facebook. Uh, just check out Saturday Night Slamcasters. You can catch me on Twitter at SlamcasterTE78. Other than that, we up out of here. Holla at your boys. Come get slammed. Peace. <laughs>